Hello and welcome. Today what we're going to talk about is how some histological specimens are made. And to do this we're going to talk about one type of microscopic section that we commonly look at when we look at biological specimens. And that is the transmission electron micrograph. And for short we often write that as TEM. And this machine here in front of us is what a modern transmission electron microscope looks like. And just to run through the general components of it, what we see at the top here, this area here, is where it produces electrons. And those electrons are forced downward along this tube here, inside it, it's all under vacuum within here. So the electrons can travel down through it here. And then in this area here, this little area in here, is where the specimen is inserted. And it sits just in here. And as the electrons come down, they go through the specimen. And the way the specimen has been treated makes some parts of it absorb electrons and other areas allow electrons to go past. And this means that some areas, if you were able to look at the electrons, will look dark and some will look light. And in fact, that's what happens down at the very base here. This window here is where the operator can look and you can see just in here this fluorescent screen. You look at this fluorescent screen and when the electrons hit it, it will glow a greeny glow colour. The various handles that you can see around it, here and on the end of this here, allow you to move the specimen on an XY plane, left and right, so you can move around to find the right area that you want. And then what you can't see is underneath here, sitting under here, is usually a camera with the lens pointed upwards. And what you can do is this equipment here controls the camera. What you can do is move the screen out of the way. So you have a little lever that moves this screen out of the way. And then you can take photographs by triggering this to end up with an image of the specimen above. Now clearly there's a whole bunch of lenses and all sorts of other technology in here that allows you to end up with a highly magnified view coming out of the bottom of this machine. In fact, the magnification of this piece of equipment runs from about you can magnify anything from about a thousand times magnification up to something in the order of a million times magnification. And at this level, you are starting to see the outlines of molecules. So just to give you some uh, 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 magnitude to this, a light microscope, the maximum a light can do would be about 10,000 times, and you can start at anything down to, you know, one or two times magnification for a light microscope. So you can see that an electron microscope, a transmission electron microscope, is something that takes the magnification from beyond light to much more substantial levels of magnification. So this is what a transmission electron micrograph, microscope looks like and how it basically operates. And what sort of images do you get from that? Well, here's a classic image of an electron micrograph taken by a transmission electron microscope. The first thing you need to notice is that they are very thin slices of tissue. So you don't see any three dimensions. Also, as I said, they're black and white. 
or shades of grey, depending on the amount of electrons that are absorbed. Now, as I said in my earlier uh, talk about scale, always have a look for a scale bar. And in this case, you can see the scale bar is measured in nanometers, which means this is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters is the length of the line shown here. So this is a relatively high magnification. And what can you see in this section of tissue? Well, in fact, what you're looking at here, this top area up here, let's just draw around it, this top sort of murky area here is actually the DNA of the nucleus of a cell. So you are actually looking at the interior of a single cell in this image. And if we look out to the side here, we can see this stuff here. Can you see this stuff all lined up here? And it's got all little dots on it. All of this area in here. This is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And those little dots on it are the ribosomes. And they take responsibility for forming proteins. And we will talk about the process of protein formation in ribosomes in a separate talk later. There's a couple of other features to notice in this section. Up here, can you see this structure sitting here? This structure here with the edges and the lines running into it, this is called a mitochondria. And mitochondria produce ATP, which is really the mechanism by which energy is transported around the cell. So this is what a common transmission electron micrograph looks like. Let's look at another one. If we look at this one, we can see two of those common intracellular features again. But the first thing to notice is we don't have a scale bar. However, what we can tell, looking at this feature here, this feature here is that same mitochondria that produces ATP. And if we look back at the previous section, here it is here, up in the corner, which is much smaller in that image than this image. So this is much more high magnification image. And the other thing to notice is it's surrounded by this rough endoplasmic reticulum again. This cell is obviously producing a lot of proteins. So this is rough endoplasmic reticulum producing proteins. A lot of protein formation is going on in this cell and it's requiring a lot of energy. And just purely as an aside story, a mitochondria actually inside it, you can't see it, but it actually has inside it a little bit of its own DNA. And a mitochondria is actually a very originally a uh, infection of cells that then was turned into an organelle of cells to produce energy. And it has its own little piece of DNA within it. And the other interesting thing about mitochondria is that they come from your mother. There is no part of a mitochondria that your father is responsible for. And what that means is that little piece of DNA in a mitochondria comes down your maternal line from your great-grandmother to your mother to yourself. And so it's a mechanism by which scientists can trace back through the millennia the relationships between mothers through history, through that little piece of DNA in the mitochondria. It's also used in forensics to try and identify various people and things in crime scenes. 
Here's another electron micrograph to look at. This one's an even higher magnification. If we check the scale bar at the bottom here, unfortunately it's been uh, drawn as a black line on a black background, but we can see it there. And we can see that this line is 200 by 10 to the minus 9 metres long. This is a very high magnification micrograph. And what we are looking at here is the edge of a single cell running through here. I'm just going to skip that little bit for a minute and I'll come back and talk about what's going on in a minute. But this is the actual edge of a cell. This is the outside world and this is the inside of a cell. And remember the inside of a cell is called the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is where all these organelles live, you know, the mitochondria, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, and these structures that we can see sitting along the edge of this membrane. These little circular things. And remember, a transmission electron micrograph is a section. So these circles are actually spheres. They have three dimensions. And what these are, these are called vesicles. And vesicles are like packages. They have content within them. They're filled with something. And you notice that this vesicle here has come to the surface and has integrated itself with the membrane of the surface. And its content is now about to be spat out into the extracellular region. And this is a way a cell can take its production and push it out into the environment. In fact, just so you know, these vesicles contain neurotransmitter. And they are pushing that neurotransmitter out. And if you look at the very bottom here, you can see the next adjacent neuron cell membrane here that that neurotransmitter is actually going to make contact with and in a separate video I'll talk about how that all works but these are called vesicles and they can transport the content of a cell outward but they can also do the reverse job these not only can export material but vesicles are also the way that a cell takes material from the outside and takes it inward. So a vesicle can be a two-part, uh, a two-way system. And the last electron micrograph I want to show you, I'm going to, oh, actually I'm going to show you two more. This is the second to last. And both these last ones are to show you the surface of cells. Again, look over here and you can see those classic looking mitochondria. There's one there, there's one there, there's another one here. And if you look really closely, you can see some rough endoplasmic reticulum in here. And you can see a little bit more over here. See those ribosomes over there and a little in here too. But the important feature to see here is the surface of the cell. And you notice the surface of this cell has all of these projections sticking out of it. Hundreds of thousands of projections. And these projections are called microvilli. And what they do is if you counted up or measured the surface area of this cell, it is massively increased by the presence, massively increased by the presence of microvilli. So microvilli are a way a cell can increase its surface area. And if a cell increases its surface area, it means more material from the outside can be collected up in vesicles and make its way to the inside. So the most common place you see this sort of microvilli 
is in places like the gut, where you want to take masses of material from within the gut and transport it into the cell to then distribute to other functions within the body. So this is a surface projection called a microvilli. And I just want to say one thing here that we're not talking about because we're talking about electron micrographs, but I don't want you to go away with any confusion. There's another cell projection that is called cilia. I've drawn one in, there's none on this photograph, but I've drawn one in to remind you that cilia are huge in comparison to microvilli. They are enormous size. And cilia are a mechanism by which cells can move things on the surface. They act like little hairs that move things on cells. But what I want you to understand that it's all about size. When you look at electron micrographs, you've got to start to recognise size. Look for that scale bar in the corner. If you can't see it, you look for features that you know, like mitochondria, and you can work out the relative magnification of a picture. And the last image I want to show you is uh, a colour enhanced transmission electron micrograph. Remember I said that micrographs, uh, micrographs are black and white because this is about the transmission of electrons. So this one has been through a computer system to colour enhance it. And what we have is we have one cell at the top in the green and one cell at the bottom in the blue. And the idea of this micrograph is to show you this area here, which is where the two cell membranes, one on this side and one on this side, this is obviously around for cell one. I'm just going to draw it in like that. And this one is obviously for cell two down here, like that. And obviously they run along here, but I'm not going to draw it in. This is to show you the two cells coming very close together. And this little part in the middle here is the extracellular substance in between, in brown here. Extracellular substance. But the really important thing to notice is if you look really closely at each of the cell membranes, can you see that they have two black lines, two dark lines? Then we have the extracellular substance here and then we have two dark lines on the other side. And that's showing you that we are almost at this magnification able to see individual molecules because cell membrane is made up by parallel sets of two molecules back to back. Like that. So we're actually looking at super high magnification and are almost able to see the actual molecular structure of the cell membrane. That's where I'm going to stop. I want to acknowledge that these images come from a series of sources and I'd like to thank the people who have really done a lot of hard work to make sure these images are nice for us to share and learn from. Thank you.